Is the iPhone 14 going to finally destroy Samsung? No. So does that mean Samsung is destroying Apple with the S22? Yuck. Yeah. The drama between Apple and Samsung extends far beyond these notch-shaped haircuts. But now in 2022, with the imminent launch of the iPhone 14, has Apple finally won? Could they spend their billions in the bank to buy Samsung, throw out the junk, and become the biggest smartphone maker ever? Or is Apple still falling behind the innovation that we see on the Android side? So here's what Apple needs to do or who they need to buy to make the iPhone 14 an unstoppable success in 2022 and finally put an end to Samsung, Google, and other Android phone makers. This could be the year that the entire smartphone landscape changes again. And a huge thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. We're now about six months away from the launch of this, Apple's latest and greatest flagship phone. The iPhone 14, or specifically the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, is gonna be the phone that has it all. It's got all the bells, all the whistles, and will be the main rival to the S22 Ultra and the Pixel 6 Pro. Some may call the iPhone 14 Pro Android's worst nightmare. And look, I'll be the first to admit here that I love Apple and maybe I have a little bit of a bias depending on uh, if you've seen the name of this channel or not. I use an iPhone, a Mac, an Apple Watch. I am in the Apple ecosystem, but even I am not afraid to admit when Apple might be making a mistake. And it's hard to look objectively at the smartphone landscape in 2022 and not be sort of impressed and a little jealous on some things going on on the Android side of the aisle, so to speak. Maybe it's time that Apple learns a thing or two from some big smartphone makers like, well, Samsung. And right off the bat, one of the biggest controversies with the iPhone 14 is the smallest part of the Pro phones, and that's with the notch. And when it comes to the 14 Pro, it looks like Apple may finally be moving in the right direction with giving us a smaller cutout on the phone. It's not exactly a notch. It's sort of like this weird combination of a pill and hole shaped cutout that is taking up way less screen real estate on the display on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. And I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this look? Some say that Apple is doing this to give you the security and the features of Face ID um, sort of intact, and Apple has to do this in order to deliver Face ID with its full sort of feature set. While others think that Apple maybe has the ability to shrink this down altogether or move it under the display, but they're choosing not to do it just because they want their phones to stand out from the competition. They don't want the iPhone 14 Pro to look like some kind of Android clone. They want it to look a little uniquely Apple, even if that means looking a little weird with that cutout combination on the screen. Another feature I would love to see Apple take from Samsung and other Android phone makers is fingerprint unlock with an under display fingerprint reader. This was, of course, if you don't remember, a huge rumor with the iPhone 13 Pro. It seemed like it was a done deal, it was gonna happen. The iPhone 13 Pro would have both Face ID and Touch ID. Apple was testing it, they patented it. It seemed like it was a done deal, but for one reason or another, it didn't happen. Again, I know that there are a lot of complications with this, but we've seen sort of a combination of face unlock and uh, an under display fingerprint reader on many different Android phones, and I'd love to see that come to the iOS side with the iPhone 14 Pro or even next year with the iPhone 15 Pro. You'd sort of have the best of both worlds. You could use one or the other. You could use both for maximum security. Just having the option of choice would be really nice to see and something that is nice on Android phones that I'd, I'll admit that as an iPhone user, I am a little bit jealous of. According to sort of reports we've heard, it seems like Apple is going all in on Face ID, so I don't know if Touch ID will ever make a return, but if it did return under the display, that would be super cool to see and something I would love to see on a Pro and iPhone sometime in the next couple of years. Another feature I would love to see Apple adopt from Android phone makers, and I guess even Samsung too, for their credit here, they're using it, basically everybody, is USB-C. I do find it funny that how, when it's convenient for Apple, they will tout USB-C as the next big thing. It's on the iPad Air, the iPad Pro, the MacBook Pro. It's this great versatile port that does just about everything. But when it comes to the iPhone, lightning still reigns supreme, and it looks like it's going to reign supreme for quite some time. 
If we could see a USB-C iPhone, that would be fantastic. You'd have one cable to rule them all. You would presumably get faster data speeds as well, maybe Thunderbolt USB-C uh, on the iPhone Pro models. It would be really nice to see a USB-C port on the iPhone and would sort of bring the entire smartphone industry uh, sort of in line with one unified port. It makes a lot of sense. We've seen it in other Apple products. It would be nice to finally see an iPhone with a USB-C port. I'd love to see it on the 14 Pro, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. Apple just makes too much money licensing uh, different made for iPhone lightning accessories and sort of um, that whole business of lightning accessories is a big business for Apple. They make a lot of money. So I don't think they're in uh, any hurry to move on to something else. I think honestly, it's probably more likely we see a portless iPhone than a USB-C iPhone. Sorry to say that, but that's just probably the cold hard truth. Love that it's on Android and I'd love to see it come to the iPhone one day. Please, Tim, USB-C on the iPhone. We'd all love that. And speaking of copying features from Samsung, what if Apple just bought Samsung? What if they bought that entire mobile division, they threw iOS on all those phones, you now had uh, iPhones that flipped and folded and you had new form factors and you had lower cost options. It seems a little too good to be true and that's because it is. Now, before we continue, whether you're a fan of iOS or Android, you're on Team Apple or Team Samsung, let's put our differences to the side for a moment and talk about something we can all get behind, and that is keeping your online activity safe, secure, and private. And of course, the best way to do that is with this video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is encrypting your online traffic to keep your activity private and away from prying eyes with next generation encryption. And with over 5,200 servers in 60 countries, NordVPN isn't just super secure, but also super speedy. So whether you're watching movies or playing games, NordVPN has got you covered with a great connection for whatever you wanna do online. Of course, they've got all your devices covered with apps on every major platform, iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, and you can connect and secure six devices simultaneously. And you can also super easily change your virtual location with just a simple click if you wanna access region lock content. And right now, NordVPN is running a special promotion for their birthday where you actually get a gift. If you purchase their discounted two-year plan, you'll get a month free plus a free gift of one one month, one year, or two years of subscription on top of your two year discounted plan. A really nice gift, so thanks NordVPN. To learn more and take advantage of that special promotion today by clicking the link right down below or by going to nordvpn.com slash the Apple Circle. Again, right now is the time to keep your online activity safe, secure, and private. And the best way to do that is with NordVPN. So learn more and again, check it out for yourself today and take advantage of that special promotion by clicking the link down below or by heading to nordvpn.com slash the Apple Circle. Before you comment down below, I know that Samsung is a huge corporation that makes everything from tanks to washing machines. They are in a bunch of different businesses. They're a, a huge company that has sort of their hands in many different industries and mobile phones is just sort of one piece of the pie, so to speak. But sort of thinking a minute about Apple buying Samsung, Apple's not gonna buy the whole company. They would just buy divisions of that company. Maybe it's their mobile phone market. Uh, maybe it is their display panel division because Apple does uh, buy Samsung uh, panels for their devices. And maybe just for the heck of it, they were to consider buying their semiconductor business, though Apple is doing just fine uh, with their own in-house semiconductor team. With a current market cap around $422 billion, Samsung Electronics is a huge company and just for the sake of discussion, to do some napkin math, to round some numbers, what would an acquisition possibly look like? I know these numbers are gonna to be totally not in line, but just for discussion's sake, let's just try to see what that might look like and how much Apple would have to pay to get Samsung's phone division. To get just a rough idea of numbers here, it looks like from Samsung's Q2 2021 earnings that their mobile division and their display division made up roughly 41-ish percent of their revenue for that quarter. And that would put a market value of those industries of about, let's just say ballpark here, 173-ish billion dollars for Apple to pay to buy those divisions. Now, in all reality, the numbers don't matter here at all for a couple of big reasons. That was just an illustration, but let me tell you why they don't even matter. One is that it doesn't even matter how much cash Apple has in the bank right now, any bank or financial institution in the world would jump at the chance to lend Apple money. So I'm sure those funds could be acquired. Whatever it happens to be, Apple could make the funds work and they'd pay whatever dollar amount it was to buy those divisions to get the mobile division and the display division just for argument's sake. 
the more important reason is that Apple buying Samsung sounds like a flashy headline, and that's really all it is. It's a flashy headline because I'm not sure if there's really any benefit here for Apple in this acquisition. Yeah, they'd get a bigger user base, they'd own much more of the smartphone market, they'd get some Samsung tech, they'd get some patents, they'd get some really smart people, but that's sort of it. I'm not sure what the big ROI here is for Apple in this really big multi-billion dollar investment. I think in all reality, it would just sort of be a headache for Apple. They would get all these users who had Samsung phones they now have to support. Trying to port iOS onto those phones would sort of be a nightmare. I guess they could make it work, but it'd sort of be a hassle, so they'd have to support Android phones. And also you'd have people who didn't buy Apple phones for a reason now going to another Android OEM because they want an Android solution. They don't want iOS, which is why they want Samsung in the first place. So it seems just sort of like a mess. I don't know really what um, benefit there would be for Apple I don't think this deal would even pass antitrust uh, scrutiny or regulation. So Apple buying Samsung is nice to think about, but it's never going to happen for a couple of big reasons. Mainly is that it really gives no benefit to anybody. Apple doesn't win. Android enthusiasts don't win. There's less competition. It's just not a good thing at all. But back to the question at hand, what could Apple do with the iPhone to compete today? What could they learn from Android phone makers, Samsung in particular, to make the iPhone different and really worthy of your money? Well, something many people have wanted to see, enthusiasts in particular, is a folding iPhone. Whether it flips or it folds, whether it looks like the Z Flip or the Galaxy Fold, whatever it happens to be, people want an iPhone of a different form factor, something different, a departure from the slab of glass we've had for many, many years, and yes, it looks like Apple is working on this, and it could be coming sooner than you may think. Rumor has it this folding iPhone has been in various stages of development. Apple has multiple prototypes they are working on, and a folding iPhone is in the works. It could be coming to be one of the biggest shakeups the iPhone lineup has ever seen. Though, recent reports have sort of indicated that Apple is sort of taking a backseat approach and letting Samsung sort of go through the trial and error, let them try and fail and figure things out, and Apple would sort of enter the market when it's matured and they think they're ready to contribute something good. It's definitely something Apple's working on, but probably not something we're gonna see in the next year or two. Maybe it's 2024, 2025. It's in the works, but probably not coming next year or the year after, maybe in the next two, three, or four years. So is the iPhone 14 going to destroy Samsung? No, of course not. We all knew that that was not gonna happen. But at the same time, is Samsung or Android going to destroy Apple? Not a chance, Apple is not going anywhere. Again, I think this competition is a great thing to see. Healthy competition drives innovation up, it should drive prices down, and again, should give us a better phone. We don't want Samsung to be destroyed. We don't want Google to be destroyed or Apple to be destroyed. This competition is a good thing, and the beauty of choice is nice, so whether you like Android or iOS, you should get the best experience possible thanks to this competition in the smartphone marketplace. So as always though, what are your guys' thoughts on this? What would you like to see the iPhone steal from Android? What could Samsung and Google and other companies learn from Apple? What could they adopt from the iOS side? What are your thoughts on all this? What do you think Apple should do? And also, do you think Apple buying Samsung makes sense? What would be the benefit? What would be uh, sort of the uh, negative consequence of that mega acquisition? Let me know your thoughts to that crazy idea down below as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle, and I will see you all in the next one.